S.I. Newhouse Jr., the owner and longtime chairman of Conde Nast, rarely wore anything to the office other than a ratty New Yorker sweatshirt. Known as S.I., his usual mode of transport was the subway, his favorite cocktail was black coffee, and he preferred seeing his dogs frolic with friends at Pug Hill, a conglomerate of pug enthusiasts, over going to lunch at Michael's or the Knickerbocker Club. When Anna Wintour, the editor of Vogue and Conde Nast's artistic director, began hosting the Metropolitan Museum of Art's annual Costume Institute Gala, she practically had to beg him to come to it. Do you really need me to go? M.S. Wintour recalled him saying, at a memorial on Monday at Jazz at Lincoln Center in the Time Warner Center. Somewhere there are pictures of him scurrying apologetically up the red carpet, never to be seen by the cameras again. But the same thing that made Mr. Newhouse, who died October 1, an unlikely steward for the world's most glamorous publishing company, also served him well in that role. Not really caring about being invited anywhere can be a good thing when fielding angry phone calls from all the glittery powerful people who got scorched in, or snubbed by, his magazines, which in addition to Vogue included Vanity Fair, The New Yorker, GQ, and Glamour. Leonard Lauder, another speaker at the memorial, described once receiving a phone call from a friend desperate to have a story in one of Mr. Newhouse's magazines killed. I said, I don't think we can, Mr. Lauder said he said, please. So I called S.I. and S.I. said, you know, I've had a lot of experience with this. If the story is worth keeping, you can't kill it. If the story's not worth keeping, I won't do it anyway. That was the nicest way to say, no, Leonard. Thank you Mr. Newhouse's self-abnegation, conscious or unconscious, added to the myth around him. So did truly loving the things his magazines covered film, books, art, architecture, theater and restaurants, said Graydon Carter, the outgoing editor of Vanity Fair. The thing about S.I. was, he loved magazines. It was the reason that Conde Nast flourished, Mr. Carter said S.I. loved magazines the way someone like Jack Welch loved light bulbs and GE. Jet engines which is one reason it came as no surprise that many of the luminaries who appeared in his magazines came for his final send-off. In addition to the editors of his publications, those in attendance included the designers Ralph Lauren and Diane von Forstenberg, the artist Jeff Koons, the book publisher Sonny Maida and the architect Rem Koolhaas. David Remnick, the editor of The New Yorker since 1998, spoke after Mr. Carter and described the process of being hired there less like an arrival than an arrest. I received a call from C's far less reticent lieutenant, the late Steve Florio, a mustachioed cigar-wielding boulevardier of the executive suite, who put matters to me in approximately these soothing terms, would you kindly direct yourself to the office in ten minutes and please don't make a hash of it. Of course, Mr. Florio put it somewhat more coarsely than that, but Mr.